Good evening, everyone. This is Leanne from Of Love and Chip Lap and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials here on Facebook. If you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to head over to our Facebook group. The link is in the video description and at the end of this video. And if you're catching us live on Facebook, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to find all of our past, present, and future videos. Tonight, I am going to be showing you guys how to sublimate some outdoor pillowcases. Now, when you find a, a product that you think might be suitable for sublimation in the wild, so to speak, as in not directly from a sublimation supplier, there's often um, a variety of questions that come to mind, particularly what's the best temp, pressure, and time to use for your substrate. So I had seen a couple people talking about these outdoor pillows that were on Amazon. The brand is called M Muley. Um, I'm not sure that's pronounced right, but the link is in the description for you guys to go ahead and find it. And um, people were kind of wondering, hey, are, can these be sublimated? They are 100% polyester. So I decided to order a couple of them in the off-white color. They do come in a couple of different colors and three different sizes, so you can have an assortment for your outdoor furniture. Uh, they are stated to be water resistant. And so this is sort of the part that becomes concerning anytime you buy something that is not from directly from a sublimation supplier because water resistant can be um, because of how the fabric is woven when it's polyester or it can be because there's a special coating. Now, of course, if there's a special coating, that becomes problematic um, because it might not take the ink or it might melt or cause some other issue during the pressing process. So I decided it was worth it to give these a try and we're gonna be doing them for the first time here in this video and hopefully it goes well. So um, let's turn this around and I will show you guys what we're working with. So one of the nice parts about pillows is that you don't really, or pillow covers, is that you don't really need a lot to work with. So first we've got our pillows. And as I mentioned, the brand is Muley. And these did come from Amazon. The link is in the video description. You can see when we take them out, they're like a nice canvas pillow. And they even have a little tag on them that says outdoor. Um... I would say that these feel a lot like denier. If you guys have ever used um, any of the denier fabric, which is actually what Condi and Johnson's both sell denier as their form of a canvas. So this is the kind of material that's typically used for awnings, hiking boots, backpacks, things that are designed to be water resistant. So with that in mind, our hope is that this pillow does not have any special coating on it, that it's just about the weave of the fabric that's gonna make it water resistant. So you get two in a pack for $13.99. Mom, I would recommend honestly selling them as a set and doing them reversible since they're outdoor pillows. That's especially beneficial. And I'll plan on doing a second video where I do the back of these for a different holiday or occasion. Um, and then if you sell them reversible, you can easily sell them for $28 and they're only going to cost you about $3 to ship them. So we've got our pillow covers. I've already gone ahead and printed our transfers. This design is in my shop. That is www.ofloveandshiplap.us. Uh, you can find this in the recently added section, I think. No, actually this was a design membership bonus. Sorry. So if you have the design membership from my shop, you are able, you pay one fee for an entire year and you get a special code that brings the total on digital designs to zero dollars. Plus you get all sorts of exclusive designs, a 10 piece bundle every month, and then a single bonus every week. And during the month of December, we do 25 days of Christmas. And then there's other bonuses here and there. Like I did five bonuses for Jasper's birthday and I did five for mine. So, I mean, every month you get over $50 in exclusive designs that no one else can buy if they don't have the membership. So I printed my transfers using my Workforce 7710 printer with printer jack ink and paper. I'm using their 13 by 19 paper, all of which is available on Amazon. Always good to use the lint roller anytime you're doing fabrics. Um, you know, if you've pressed something with lint on it, you know that you get those little blue specks. 
So we're definitely gonna make sure that we lint roll, even though they just came out of the package. I mean, I took them out of the package once before just to check them out, but we will make sure to use that. You always have the option to use an adhesive spray or tape. Um, I am not gonna use either tonight, but I did wanna make sure I showed it just so you guys could see. And then my favorite tool when it comes to lining up anything is a laser level. So let's go ahead and move over to our heat press. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is go ahead and pre-press this. Since it's pretty wrinkly from shipment. Now, anytime you're um, pre-pressing a substrate, first of all, it's always a good idea to cover it just in case there's something on your heat press. I don't think there is, but I do try and make it a habit to cover things. Um, the time that you want to use for pre-pressing really depends on your substrate. So these are a little bit thicker and it's not really humid this time of year. So I'm going to go for 30 seconds and we'll see if the wrinkles are out. Now keep in mind that pre-pressing is not just to get those wrinkles out, but it's also to help push out any moisture that's in your fabric. All fabric materials have moisture. They absorb it from the atmosphere. This is basic science. Um, and when you um, press something that has that moisture in it, it will shrink during the pressing process and then that's what causes ghosting. It's one of the causes of ghosting. So I did that for about 30 seconds. And the first thing I'm seeing is that this little tag is kind of sticking to the paper. So when I feel that tag, you can see the writing even melted a little bit. This tag feels kind of plasticky. So I wanna make sure that's actually off of the heat press um, when I do press my design, just to be safe, we don't want that to melt on our heat press. So with that in mind, I'm actually just shifting this over to the edge. So you can see the little tab is off the edge there. And we're not quite wrinkle free, so I'm gonna press this again. It also looks like my corner had folded down. I do find that canvassy fabrics like this, they tend to need two pre-presses just because of the thickness of the fabric. Today we're using my 16 by 20 heat press from acesdeals.net. And I have this set on 385, so the temperature dropped a little bit, obviously, because we put a substrate on it. One of the common questions I see is, how do you know what temperature to use? Um, really, it's always your best guess when it comes to a substrate that's, quote, from the wild, as this is, because you just don't know for sure. With this particular one, um, the reason why I'm going with 385 is because I wasn't sure if there was a coating on it. I want to make sure I keep the zipper off the edge. Uh, it looks like it's a plastic zipper, so it's best to keep it off of the edge so that you don't end up um, so that you don't end up melting it. And if it's a metal one, of course, you just have to be hot. Now, before I press my design. I'm actually going to unzip this and make sure that the lining didn't fuse together because that's another issue that can happen. Oh, look at that. Nothing. Pulls apart, no problem. But that's another issue that can happen with pillow covers is that the lining can fuse together, which, you know, then you can't use your pillow cover. All right. So next I'm going to go ahead and lint roll. Just to be safe, I've got a nice Nice fresh sheet here. And then I'll go ahead and place my design. Move you guys a little bit closer here. Now I believe when I measured these, these were 17 by 17. Let me just double check here. Yes. So the pillow covers are 17 by 17 and I didn't feel like dividing my design. So I went ahead and did my design um, 12 and a half by 12 and a half because that was the biggest I could get it on a 13 by 19 page. And I think that that's really, it's pretty suitable for a 17 inch or an 18 inch um, pillow cover without it looking like it's too small. Cause once the pillow is uh, filled, that design is gonna appear nice 
in the center of it. So we wanna make sure we're centered. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of measure. I know you guys can't see from the bottom of my design. So because of the size, we need about two and a half inches on each side from the edge. That's how we'll know it is centered. Okay. So we've got our design centered. And now we just wanna make sure that it is straight. <laughs> so this particular design is, the text is supposed to be at an angle. So I believe we're already there. But if it wasn't, we would use our laser level to make sure that the text is straight. So the nice part, this design does have a little bit of leeway because I did create it that way. You'll notice that the paper is curling just a little bit from the heat. Um, this doesn't happen with all papers, but it does seem to happen with Printer Jack. And if that bothers you while you're using it, you can just use a little piece of tape. I know I said I wasn't going to, but I figure I might as well because I have seen people ask this question. So with our heat tape in place and our transfer where we want it, we're gonna go ahead and put our cover sheet to prevent any blowout of ink. And we're gonna press it. So thicker fabrics like this, in general, you wanna use medium firm pressure. And if you're wondering like where I got the temperatures from and the time and so on and so forth, um, it, I'm really just basing it off of other pillow covers that I've tried. Now I've tried both ones that you find in the wild and those that come from suppliers. They all pretty much say 385 for 60 seconds for any ones that are like linen, linen or cotton feel. And some of the thicker ones like the faux burlap, those ones are recommended to do 400 for 60. Now I'm also gonna do about 10 seconds less because I'm using that printer jack paper and it's high release. So they actually do recommend using less time. So we're just about to be there. I'm gonna get my heat glove on. And another little trick to prevent ghosting is to hold your press as you pop it so that you don't get that jump up that can cause your paper and your transfer to move. So because I've never pressed these before, I'm just gonna peel this up and check to make sure we got a good transfer. And we did before I peel it completely off. If I peeled it up and we didn't have good color on the edge, then I would know that I would, um, that I would wanna press this a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake that off for a second so it's cool. Oop. And you can see that those colors are very vibrant and beautiful. And I'll go ahead and grab the second one just so we can walk through that process again. So here's our second pillow cover. I'm gonna get it lined up. And again, because we already know that that little um, rubber tab thing melts, we're gonna make sure that's off of the press this time. Get some cover paper. And you can use, um, butcher paper, parchment paper. I was using builder's paper for a while because I had it on hand, but since I've stopped doing signs, I switched over to masking paper, which is, um, you know, painters put it on the floor to protect your home. So I've gone ahead and done that. Been using that because it's only a few dollars at Harbor Freight Tools for a nice size roll. So we're gonna give this the full 60 seconds since last time the 30 seconds wasn't long enough. And I'm just going to show you guys how much ink came off of our paper. Darker colors tend to take a little longer to transfer, but we still had really great uh, ink release from this printer jack paper. I do notice that it does release ink well, and it's available on Amazon, so I'm definitely happy with that. Feel free to put any questions in the comments, and I can answer them after the video. All right, so we got our second transfer on here. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and measure from the various edges to make sure that this is centered. And as I mentioned before, that is two and a half inches for this particular design because of its size. Oops, I moved that a little bit. 
So it looks like we're about centered. Now, anytime you're doing two pillow covers, you always want to double check to make sure that your text is uh, lined up the same way or in the same angle in this case. So I'm just going to set this here so I can kind of compare them. I think we're good there. Once again, I'll go ahead and use a little bit of tape because we are getting that, um, that curling from the moisture leaving the paper. Oops. By the way, I didn't lint roll this one because when I lint rolled the first one, there was like literally, there was nothing on it. So um, this particular water resistant canvas is designed to repel lint, dust, hair, all that sort of stuff. So once again, we're doing 385 for 60 seconds. Um, I, again, I'm only doing about 50 seconds because of the paper that I'm using. And those kind of adjustments are just things that you make based on your ink, your paper, your printer. Um, you know, unfortunately, when it comes to sublimation, everything is not black and white. There's a lot of variables and the type of paper and ink that you use can be one of them. Even your pressure um, can play a role into the time it takes, the thickness of the substrate, etc. So once again, we're just gonna hold that down while we pop that up. And then we'll very carefully check to make sure, yep, we're good, and peel that off. And we'll shake it out. And there we go. Just like that, we've got our two beautiful outdoor pillow covers. These are gonna be great on my outdoor sofa, which I got for really cheap. It's in like brand new condition. I got super cheap on the Facebook marketplace. <laughs> so now I've got some great holiday pillow covers to go with them. Um, you can see this did not take any time at all for us to do two pillow covers. Again, these are available on Amazon. They come in three different sizes and a variety of colors and they are $13.99 for a pack of two. I recommend doing them double-sided and that way you can easily market them for $28 to $30 with your shipping costs, only costing a few dollars first class mail. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and be sure to sort of be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or join us on Facebook, depending on where you're viewing this video. And happy holidays.